Welcome back to Morning Joe. 39 past the hour. With us now, Republican Congressman Peter King of New York. He serves on the House Committee on Intelligence and Homeland Security. Good day Peter, to have you Peter, in. Peter, how does a private first class um, get access to bad. all of these documents? State Department documents. I mean, it's, it's an, uh, that seems like the federal government has really let America down and its allies. They really have. I mean, to have some PFC to be able to bring about the worst diplomatic catastrophe in American history is... Uh, Again, they have to resolve that. They have to straighten it out. They have to. Uh, again, it's unimaginable how this could happen. Listen, you and I have been in the Congress. Right. I'm on the Intelligence Committee, the Homeland Security Committee. I go in for a briefing. I have to hand over my cell phone. I go in behind two locked doors. I sit down. Whatever I, I was write down. Say, I never had access to this. You are now chair. You're going to be right. chairman again. Right. You never had access to this type of material. No, like, yeah, private first class does. No, and if I just take uh, notes, they're taken from me and put in a safe right. uh, behind two locked doors. Yeah, this is incomprehensible. So this was allowed you're to calling for fairly dramatic action here, which is would you, you'd like WikiLeaks to be designated as a foreign terrorist organization. What would that mean? Yeah, I mean so, uh, first of all, the uh, benefit of that is we would be able to seize their assets and we'd be able to stop anyone from helping them in any way, whether it's making contributions, giving free legal advice or whatever. Mm -hmm. It would also, I believe, strengthen the Secretary of State's hand in dealing with foreign nations as far as trying to get them extradited, try to get them to take action against them. Either we're serious about this or we're not. And I know people may think this is a bit of a stretch, but I analogize it to the RICO statute, where they had a pretty narrow definition of criminal enterprise at the beginning. By now, that's been expanded quite a bit to deal with contemporary uh, problems. I think if we're going to live in this uh, uh, in this world, in this technological world, where information can be disseminated so quickly, we have to be serious and take firm, strong action against those who are putting American lives at risk, because this will put people's lives at risk. I, I want to get back to Bradley Manning, Private First Class Bradley Manning. Yeah. I mean, all the talk, of course, is the content of what was leaked today. Mm -hmm. How do we prevent, though, going forward, a private first class or anybody right. like that from walking out of secured facilities with all of this information? How, what do we do? Well, they don't have to walk out of it anymore. They just, you know, yeah. uh, can email it. You know, I'm, I don't know. What I'm saying is that the, the administration has to come Who forward. Who does know, though? Uh, it should be the Director of National Intelligence, it should be the Head of the CIA, FBI, Justice Department, or Homeland Security all have to come together. Now, now you can hold hearings on this, right? You I, can oh, get to we the will. Definitely. No, I, I intend to have full hearings on this, but the answer is going to have to come from the people who are in charge, and that is the, head of the, the heads of the intelligence community. This cannot be allowed to go on. And, and should, should we not focus, should you not focus first on figuring out how we failed before going after WikiLeaks? I right. understand what you're saying about WikiLeaks. Right. I, think it, I think it may be overstepping a good Deal. Mm -hmm. That being said, isn't your first task to call government agencies and the White House leaders in front of, uh, of your committee and say, how did this happen? How do we stop it from happening again? Because so it obviously happened mm -hmm. under Bush as well. We have to walk and chew gum at the same time. We have to do both. We have to stop it from happening in the future. We have to go after those who are doing it now as a deterrent so it doesn't happen. And both have to be done. I agree completely. We have to do both simultaneously. But you know, you can't, you can't designate them a terror outfit. No, Joe, I, think we should, we have to, I don't think we should just write that off that quickly and say we can't do it. I mean, they are assisting in terrorist activity. The information they are giving is being used by Al Qaeda. It's being used by well, our you, enemies. You can say that about, about uh, Ellsberg and the Pentagon Papers in 71. Was he a terrorist? Well, I don't think Ellsberg was a, uh, you know, the folk hero people made him out to be. And in many ways, this is the logical result though? of that. No, because first of all, in those days, there was no uh, information. This was done. This was a one-shot deal. There were no terrorist organizations per se. We're talking about a couple of countries then. We're talking about North Vietnam. We're talking about China. Right. Now we're talking about uh, terrorist groups all over the world, especially what this is going to do to us in Yemen mm. and Pakistan and Saudi Arabia, where the most sensitive negotiations are going on, where American lives are definitely on the line. Okay. Also, the Ellsberg Papers didn't disclose any sources. What you have here now, these cables, they're going to be going through with a magnifying glass foreign intelligence agencies. And something that seems innocuous, it's in a cable on a certain date in a certain year, they'll be able to trace that back. Of how did we find that? Who gave them to us? Was okay. it a source in their government? So, 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 so let, let's talk about one of the issues that came up. Mike, you were talking about $53 million. Is $52 that right? million. Dollars. The vice president of Afghanistan goes to the United Arab Emirates. <clears throat> he takes a suitcase with $52 million in cash. His money transports it to the United Arab Emirates. Mm -hmm. That's, in effect, I think, our money in Afghanistan. We have young men and women dying in mm -hmm. Afghanistan today, supposedly to create a government that can relate to the people of Afghanistan and govern effectively. 
What does what does this say about our role in Afghanistan? How how much are people stealing from us in addition to the lives they're stealing from us? Listen, this is not a Jeffersonian democracy. There's corruption. There's no doubt about it. There's money being stolen. What I am trying to find in Afghanistan is a reasonably stable government. Uh, there are very. It's few not there. It may be that. I, You're I, not going to find it. Joe, I'm not, I'm not that certain. I have been there. I mean, it was just to make me the expert, but I've been there, and there are people on the ground who do believe there are people in the government we can work with. And remember, even though the government... Is Karzai one of those people? Some say he is. I mean, I say well, either way, we I know have said to. It. He needs point. to take his pills, first of all. Can oh. you tell him that? Yeah, see, take uh, his listen, pills? I'm not here to defend Kaiser. I'm saying there are people on the ground there who believe that he is a guy that can be working. Whether we can or not, he's the one who is there now, and he's better than the Taliban and better than Al Qaeda. Yeah,